So I've uh, been doing a little work on the electric radiator fans on my 350 SDL. You can see I've replaced the dual fans with this large single fan. It's uh, rated at uh, 1200 to 1400 CFM, depending on how much stuff you put behind it. And it flows a decent amount of air. I think it should be a nice improvement. The uh, stock fans bearings were going bad, so it needed a uh, needed replacement anyway, and I wasn't about to spend you know, $900 for a new set of fans from Mercedes. I've got the uh, front bumper off. I picked up this used bumper, which has really, really nice chrome, except for that one dent there, but really nice, no rust. You can see my existing bumper. I've started to, uh, I just poked at it. This is all, all rust, all rust inside of here. And, uh, you can see all the fasteners have just turned to dust. This is a common problem with, uh, with 126 cars. So getting the cover off of this, which is still in good shape, might be a bit of an issue. If it wasn't a different color than the uh, car I got this off of, I'd just pop this one on, but oh well. You can see, I know there's some guys in Europe who watch my videos. This is the oil cooler that the uh, 603 diesel 126 cars uh, got. I don't think that uh, any of the gas models had it down there. They would have it here on the side. So what I'm working on now is the radiator fan pre-resistor for the slow speed. So unfortunately the wiring diagram is not correct for this car. Um, the one listed for the 350 SDL only is for 1990, um, but I think it pretty closely matches this diagram, which is for the 91 uh, V8 gas cars. So you can see we've got uh, two relays, the slow speed or pre-resistor relay and the relay. Those two normally go right here. This is the the full speed relay, and this is the resistor relay. I've got those uh, popped out, those relay plates popped out of the unit at a moment, before the moment. So the way this works is there's this device, which is the resistor. So when power comes in, from the uh, slow speed relay, it goes through the res it has to go through the resistor before it gets to the fan motors, and the high speed relay gets its power uh, right from the connection block over there where the alternator wiring connects in, um, and then uh, comes in through the relay and then directly to the fans. And the coils are powered by fuse number five, which is a, uh, a small fuse, so there's a good bit of safety there. The problem I encountered is that, well, first problem is you can see this got pretty hot and melted, and I think it is just a bad connection where these main power wires go into this, this relay plate. The other problem is that the slow speed quit working, and uh, I initially thought that it was just that resistor. I have a new one here. You can see uh, see what it looks like. It's just a, uh, a wire wound coil inside of there, and you would think, oh, that's no problem. That's a nice little easy thing to pick up. Where is it located? Well, unfortunately. Let's see if we can see it down in there. It is. If you look way down there, I don't know if I can get the camera to focus on it, but that terminal that you see down there buried in leaves, that right there is that 
main plus connection and then the other side of that device is over here and this wire that you see right there that's burnt up is the output from the slow speed relay so that's why this uh, this wasn't working now you can see that is a challenging spot to get to and I'd either need to take the false firewall out or take the brake master cylinder out neither of which I want to do so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is try and just abandon that in place the other thing I want to do is use this resistor instead this is what Volkswagen fitted on the uh, B5 for the fifth generation Passats they had a single speed electric fan and then they used this to make the low speed and this is a little bit higher resistance than, than the Mercedes part. It's also a little bit bigger, so it dissipates heat better. I've not yet uh, figured out where I'm gonna mount these guys. I was thinking maybe like right here on the, on the firewall could work out pretty decent because there's, uh, there's nothing on the back side. But, um, because this will get kind of hot as it's running, so I want it to be away from from other stuff, but I also don't want it to be in too much of a water spray. And also right here, there's several little access points, so I can, I can run the wiring pretty easily. So I think that that's what I'll do. And, uh, then I should be able to get this going again. All right. Okay, so this car, the colors do match. You can see the output of the previous resistor relay is listed as a black violet wire. We come over here, sure enough, black violet. So what I think I'm going to do, I can't get that wire out of there that's burnt off but what I can do is I can just cut this or actually I'll just disconnect it at the, the relay or maybe I'll cut it I don't know but I can take that and cut it off the resistor down there will still get power on one side of it but the other side won't be connected so I think that will be sufficient for safety and then I can just have my wires come out of the fuse box, go to my resistor here, come back in and I can bridge it at the high speed relay. So instead of it being bridged right here, it'll be bridged right there. So that will work out pretty well, it should be safe. And I don't have to take uh, half the car apart to get at the location where that uh, connection is. Okay, that's mounted. This was actually a factory hole. I just slipped that little rubber grommet in there. The, uh, the wires are nice and secure. This whole thing's on there really nice. I was able to run the wires up into one of these factory uh, grommets. So now I'll just uh, take my wires and wire them into the slow speed fan relay. Okay, all done. So what I've accomplished is the Volkswagen Audi resistor is mounted on the false firewall. This hole already existed, so I just popped a rubber grommet on it. Additionally, I've installed a BMW temperature switch in the upper water neck that clicks on its first setting at 91 degrees Celsius and its second setting at 99 degrees Celsius, which will drive the first and second speeds of the fan, respectively. Now, originally here, there was a uh, temperature sensor for the uh, diesel engine computer, which really was just setting the idle speed. What I'm probably gonna do is uh, 
relocate that sensor uh, down here. You can see there on the uh, water pump housing. I'd intended to put the BMW sensor there, but the the clearance on that water neck there where the thermostat is was too close, so it ended up not fitting. So that harness runs down along. I need to zip tie this all still, but uh, down into the fuse box. I've still got it apart. I've got a couple of things going on here in the fuse box. So this is the wires from that temperature switch, which switches to ground, so that will either turn on the low speed or high speed fan relay. This is a factory wire that the climate control unit uses that temperature sensor to know when to turn on when it's heating, and it also activates the high speed fan at 110 degrees Celsius. This wire is from the AC high pressure switch. It originally went to the low speed relay, but I moved it over to the high speed. And then on the low speed relay, we've got the uh, low speed or the lower temperature on that uh, temperature switch. And then another wire goes down and down in here, I've got just a flying relay. Unfortunately, there were no free spots up above. And what that does is when the climber relay turns the compressor clutch on, that is connected into here and sends the plus signal to that relay, turning it on, which then turns on ground to the low speed fan relay. So what we have here is the electric radiator fan will run on low speed anytime the AC compressor clutch is pulled in, anytime the coolant is above uh, 91 degrees Celsius, and it will run on high speed anytime the refrigerant pressure on the high side is over 250 PSI, or when the coolant temperature is above uh, one or uh, what did I say, 99 degrees Celsius? Yeah, I think that's what the temperature switch is. And as a fail safe, if that temperature switch fails, the factory uh, climate control unit will turn the fan on at 110, and full speed at 110 degrees Celsius. That's better looking. So, I mentioned before that this relay does not have a fuse before it, the fuse is actually built into the relay. There's a 40 amp, amp fuse in it. For the low speed fan relay, it uses fuse uh, one. That draws about seven and a half amps running, so 16 amp fuse should be just about right. So what I'm gonna do now is run the car for a little bit and make sure that nothing is getting too hot, but I think this project is about done. Uh, I have not yet decided if I'm going to eliminate the the clutch fan. Um, I probably will, and I've got a second electric fan and a small one that I can put right here. But for now, that at least gets it to the point where the car uh, car will keep keep it cool, and the air conditioning should work well. Um, this fan, I notice it just the clutch just doesn't perform that well. It takes too long to come on and then it stays on for too long sapping power. I mean this thing must take 20 horsepower, 15 horsepower to run. It it moves a lot of air but holy cow does it drag the motor down. So I guess that's it for tonight. Hopefully tomorrow I can finish up the bumpers. Alright. Thanks for watching.